good time roll. Oh, let the good time roll. We don't care if you're young or old. Get together, let the good times roll. Hi, I'm Bruce Smart, I'm 35, and four years ago I promised my mum as she fought a long battle with cancer that I'd live out my dream and I'd motorcycle around the world. I'm going to ride 100,000 miles through 83 countries, solo and unsupported, over about 18 months. The aim is to raise £1 million for my four selected charities, who are the St Christopher's Hospice in Penge, the Children's Trust, the Royal British Legion and the Born Free Foundation. A Suzuki GSX-R1000 might not be everybody's choice of world-beating steed. But I'm not everybody. Why? My mum said something to me when she was um, in the last few months of her life. We were sitting on a couch watching uh, Long Way Round on the TV. And I was moaning saying I'd love to do something like that. And my mum turned around to me and she said, you know, live your life. Don't ever have regrets. Look after those that you love, but live your life. And uh, that sparked it for me. That was it. I had to do it. I went off, booked my bike test, did that. Um, walked into St Christopher's Hospice uh, in Penge, where my mum was by that point. I walked in there dressed as a Power Ranger with the keys to my brand new Jixxer 600 parked outside. Give her a smile and uh, you know my mum just had a big beaming smile and she made me promise that I would do this trip. Six days later she lost her battle and passed away. You know, people say to me, why are you doing it on that bike? Why are you doing that route? Why are you doing it? The drive I've got for this. It can't be put into words, you know, I, I will do this. I know it's going to be hard, I know it's going to be tough, I know it's going to be frustrating. It has been in the three years that it's taken to plan just to get to this stage. But I'll do it. I will do it. You know, there's bits where I'll be pushing the bike, there's bits where I'll be picking it up, there'll be bits when I'm digging it out, there'll be bits when I'll be kicking it because it won't start. There's going to be frustration. But there's going to be wonder, there's going to be excitement, there's going to be adrenaline. I can't wait. It's an adventure at the end of the day. If it was a holiday, everybody would do it. I began planning and preparing for Teapot One almost three years ago. And in those early days, our events could be a somewhat solitary affair. But with a good solid team behind me, over the next 18 months to two years, we visited events and cafes all around the country, growing the reputation and the following for Teapot One. We made lots of new friends, and it wasn't long before people started to take an interest. Oh. Just got back from Hill for Leathers. Boys have done a nice splendid job putting the old uh, stickers on, the patches on. That's us with Fast Bikes, Shuey and City. It's the latest ones to come on board. As you can see, they've done a splendid job. I'm sure Moby and the boys will be happy with that. Uh, what else have we got planned today? Been to the doctors this morning, starting the meds. I feel a bit of a dartboard now, to be honest with you. I've had about 19 injections, various different pack tablets. You listen to me, I probably rattle. Um, yeah, we've got six months worth of medication to get through, 550 quid it's going to cost. So once I've finished Teapot 1, if somebody out there wants to do another one of these rides for me, that would be fantastic. Um, what else is new? What's going on today? Garmin, Garmin will come on board. Fantastic, thank you very much Claire Hoch. Now got uh, some SAS involvement. Uh, friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. 
Uh, he has made some inquiries asking what sort of outward bound, what sort of survival experience I have. And I said, well, I've worked Peckham, that's about it. Um, so he is putting together a little survival course and um, he's going to drag me through it uh, for two days and one night. Um, escape and evasion, um, what else? Learn how to cook, I don't know, frogs, tadpoles, I haven't got a clue. He's basically just going to teach me some survival skills uh, using the kit that I'm going to be taking. I turned up at the Essex headquarters of VGSOE to take part in their hostile environment course. Bruce, what's going on? Yeah, we're better grilling it, baby. Uh, we are getting some tinder. I'm going to start a fire. I'm sure you are. The thing on telly at the moment with Ray Mears, Bear Grylls, all that. But yeah. basically, you, get, you do get a strike with it. But the best bit is actually the back of a knife because you can put a bit more pressure on it. And all it does is create hot sparks, okay? Now, if we know how to apply these hot sparks to the right materials, we can make fire, okay? It really doesn't take a lot with one of these to get it going. There we go, we'll up and run this, okay? Quick as that, yeah? yeah. And then obviously the next bit would be this tinder, so and so on, into slightly bigger sticks, bigger sticks, so you have the fire. How easy is that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that simple. On that. <laughs> if that's a coated blade, yeah, I think it is, actually. The edge won't actually grab mine, mate, right there. Use the back of that. You need to just wear a bit of the, the, off, the yeah. blacking off, yeah. Like Harry Potter. You, you were close then, it almost went. I suggest you use your one then. Pelusium <laughs> <laughs> aluminum. Oh. I'll get some more. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> I think you want a bit more of that then, go. You ain't got any more batteries, have you? <laughs> Talk us through it, Bruce. What's Go going on? on? Quickly and get them done, done guys, and all before it rains, obviously you save yourself yeah. a bit of dry ground to sleep on too. Trying to get shelter because it's yeah. starting to tip though. Sorry mate. Not much paper to talk, got to build. Points to know, needs to know. Save up, remortgage, take the hotel. <laughs> Fans of uh, Born Free and Bambi might want to look away now. <laughs> right, okay. What's happening tonight and what's... What are you all packing, getting ready for? Uh, just getting the fires ready, we're getting a thing called a bug bag up and ready, so um, if or when the uh, the lads turn up to try and capture us, we grab the bag and go get out. Um, tonight is going to be kipping in the shelters that we've made and uh, waiting for a hunter force to come and get us. And then once they're en route and we know they're here, uh, we're going to be getting out and Ralph and Dan are going to be showing us how to maybe survive on the run. Well, good luck. I will update you. You want to make you on? Well, as you can see, um, what is it about piss poor planning, something like that? Well, uh, yeah, this is my shelter for the night. From here down, it's lovely, toasty, warm, <laughs> but um, <laughs> as you can see, it was a slight malfunction. <laughs> Never mind. Well, <laughs> the techniques we were taught that evening are used by our forces today, and as such, I couldn't video any of it. But it was well, well worth it. Right, morning. It's the morning after the night before. Uh, what a night! What a night! That was the escape and evasion phase of it. Um, as Ralph said, uh, we got quite a few hours kept first before they hit about, what was it, two o'clock? Around about then, about half one, two o'clock in the morning, and uh, yeah, rude awakening. <laughs> uh, Ralph and Dan very kindly dragged uh, myself and Tony out of our uh, shelters, which were co nice and cosy, to be honest with you. And uh, then it was just a, uh, well, I felt like a newborn Bambi paddling my way through the woods, to be honest with you, uh, out into um, a kind of hold-up point, and uh, and from there it was just. Uh, it was like the fox being chased by the hound, to be honest with you. We lasted a while, I think. I think we lasted about, what, a quarter of minutes? Half hour, 40 minutes? Yeah, and uh, got caught, and uh, I ended up hooded, bound, 
boots off, socks off, and uh, in a hole in the ground somewhere, somehow. <laughs> but to be fair, I was never going to outrun him. Uh, but uh, we managed to get out of that one, and uh, yeah, it was a good old night, very good night. Um, it hasn't stopped raining all night, but uh, we've been quite cosy here in the wee shelter. And then Ralph's just cook cooked us a, a lovely little fry up for the morning. It's been a top night, it's been a real eye opener for me to be honest with you about um, just general survival skills, how to set the fire, um, preparing meat that you might catch, um, and if the worst happens, just uh, a little inkling into the feelings of uh, what it's going to be like, I think. But it's been awesome. I uh, want to thank Ralph and Dan. Thank you very much, boys. No worries, right? From VGSOE. Uh, fantastic training, fantastic preparation. Anyone thinking of going to do a, a similar sort of trip to mine, I thoroughly recommend doing it. If, you, if you've never done the out Outward Bound thing, really would recommend you coming out here and uh, giving this a bash. So VGSOE. Is it .com or .co.uk? .co.uk. .co.uk. VGSOE.co.uk. You'll see it on the screen now. Have a click, see what you think, and uh, I'd really recommend it. Cheers, guys. I'm going over for a shower. Right, moment of truth. We're, uh, we're here at the passport office in London to apply for the second passport. This is uh, kind of make or break, really. We need the second passport to get all the visas uh, and to get to places like Syria, Israel, some of those countries. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we've got all the paperwork in order, and uh, I'll check back in a minute. Well, it didn't quite go as easily as that, but I did eventually get the second passport. But things didn't always run quite as smoothly. Well, it's uh, 30th of uh, August 2012. Um, I just got back from the States. I've been over there at a friend of mine's wedding. Before I went, I was having a few issues with the carne, carne de passage. Well, not a lovely phone call. I got a phone call off a lovely woman called Jess, who I've been dealing with the whole way through. She's put up with a lot of spiel from me. Um, obviously, just getting a bit heated and quite stressed about the whole thing. Uh, and unfortunately, I've spoken with Jess this morning. Things aren't looking good at, at all. Uh, not only does the start date of the 1st of October look like it's in jeopardy, but... Um, the whole, the whole trip, the whole trip could be in, in jeopardy now. Uh, I can't, can't believe that really. After almost three years planning, a month before I go, uh, I might not be going. So uh, we'll see. Um, I need to, I need to know by tomorrow. 31st really, uh, if I'm getting this carne or not, and um, if I don't get it by tomorrow then that throws all my visa applications back, uh, meaning I won't be leaving on the 1st, it doesn't look like I'm going to be leaving on the 1st now anyway, hopefully, hopefully if there's a miracle, there's anyone out there, well if there's a miracle, uh, something might happen, uh, at least I'll be able to go. I'm sorry it'll be very bad news folks. Um, have a brew and uh, sit down and think about what's going to happen. Cheers. Wow. Well, um, just come off the phone. Uh, a phone call from, from Jess at the RAC, as you can tell from her face, I'm a, a bit happy, um, a bit shocked really, we got it, I got it, uh, I don't know how she did it, but uh, they've come through, RAC have come through, um, honoured the, um, the quote I was given a couple of years ago, and um, wow, Got my carne, we should be here tomorrow. God, we're back on. <laughs> That's it, we're back on, ready for the first. Oh, Jess, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, 
I know you've worked hard there. Um, and apologies for for losing it on the phone umpteen times. I know it wasn't your fault, but thank you so much for coming through. And folks, where it go? See you on October the first. Well, we're here at Travco. We've got the Mali and the Mauritania Valley visa. So we're ready to go. Oh, one week to go. I'm travelling around the world solo, so I'll have to do all the filming and editing myself. Austin Vince is one of the greats in the overlanding world. Back in the 90s, Austin, his brother and some mates went round the world in two magic expeditions. Terrasaka and Mondo Enduro. Austin now runs an adventure film school, so I popped along for some hints and tips from the master himself. Hi, my name's Austin Vince, uh, and I've been very lucky to work with uh, Bruce in preparation for Teapot One. It's going to be an amazing trip. I envy him enormously. Uh, of course, the choice of bike is laughably uh, inappropriate, and therein that will be the making of the man. If anyone can handle it, it's Bruce Smart. Good luck. Well, here we go. It's, uh, I've got a watch, don't know why I'm looking there. Um, it is Thursday, Thursday 27th of September 2012, we're a couple of days away now, uh, what four days, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, yeah, four days away from me leaving, um, it's just last minute, it's manic, absolute manic, uh, pretty much boxed up my life, sold my life, the flat has been almost emptied now, um, I've just got a kit that's lying about around here which has to get packed up and put onto the bike. Um, but it's all getting there. It's just the uh, last minute visa applications, making sure that they're all done and off to Travcore. Uh, and then Amanda at Travcore can just work our way through them. We've got 25 visas um, applications that I have to do now, uh, get the paperwork done, get them off to Travcore, and then they will handle it uh, and apply for it en route, you know, as I'm en route, as you like. Um, so logistically, it's a bit of a handful. Um, got the two passports, so they'll be flying about through the ether. Uh, emails will no doubt be getting banded about left, right and centre, but um, yeah, it's going well, we're getting there. I'm just really excited, just really, really excited. I cannot wait to go. I'll be sad to leave, um, you know, to leave my friends, my family, my missus, Nikki, um, and my boy. I'll be sad to, to leave everybody here, but, you know, this has been my life for uh, full on, it's been my life for two and a half, three years now, and um, you know I've been thinking about doing something like this for for many, many, many years, as I'm sure a lot of you have. But anyone can do it. it takes a lot of sacrifice, a lot of sacrifice, and it is hard. It is hard already. There's been ups, there's been downs. But God, I can't wait to go. I cannot wait to get on with this. We're doing it, folks. We'll see you on the start line. Ready when you are, big man. Let's go. Brissy. Oh. Flashing, is that on? <laughs> Brissy, hi. You've come a long way from the gate, son. Well, I see Brissy, boy. I mean, we all know your f***ing trek, don't you? I mean, look at that. Look at that. Hey, don't you can wiggle his ears. I like it on you, ladies. He's got many layers. <laughs> Right, well, no, I don't want to. What do you want me to say? Whatever you want, whatever you think about the trip. What, today? No, Teapot One, you're numpty. Oh, I think that's an awesome trip. Uh, in fact, I'm going to come and meet you, and we're going to do the from wherever it is you're in London, and we're going to drive down to um, Le Mans with you, dude. Maybe no, not invited. Good point. Them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, dude. Sorry, shouldn't have swore. Sorry about that. <laughs> Great trip.